Good morning. Welcome to Emmanuel Assembly of God Saturday School. This morning we're going to continue our Bible study on the book of Genesis and we're going to look at Genesis chapter 26. So if you want to see the notes, click on the tab that says notes in the lower left hand corner and the notes will appear. If you want to print them off, click on that section, save as a PDF and print them off then come back and join us. So let's get ready. Get your Bible study, get your, uh, your lesson, your pen, your Bible, your notebook, and your maybe your second cup of coffee. Isaac sins like Abraham. Genesis chapter 26. Question number one. There was a famine in the land, verses one and two. Now it says that Isaac journeyed toward Egypt, not into Egypt, but toward Egypt, to Gerah. Now, though Isaac lived in the land of promise, the place that God said to Abraham, I'm going to give you every place that your foot sets on, it was not trouble-free. You remember in the life of Abraham twice, Abraham attempted to leave the area to go someplace, and he got into trouble, and uh, Isaac uh, had to deal with the king of Gerar. Now, we see that the person here is to Abimelech, king of the Philistines. Now, the word Abimelech is simply a, a title. It's not a name. Uh, it means like king. So he had to deal with the king of Gerar. Uh, probably not the same one that uh, Abraham had to deal with. Now, as Isaac is journeying toward Egypt, the Lord appeared to Isaac in a dream. He told him, do not go down to Egypt. He told him, live in this land, and I will bless you and your descendants. Remember, Abraham got into trouble when he went down into Egypt. He says, I will bless you because Abraham obeyed me. And he tells Isaac, keep my commands and I will bless you too. And I will make you a great nation. I'll make your seed multiply. and The blessing will be yours. So as a result, Isaac stayed in Gerar. He stayed. He did not go down to Egypt. But Question number three, Isaac told the men of Gerar that Rebekah was his wife, and he was afraid they would kill him for her. However, he was found out to be lying. Now, uh, when Abraham said that Sarah was his wife, well, that was, or was his sister, that was half true. Yeah, okay, well, it was true that they had the same uh, father, but not the same mother. Uh, here, uh, Rebecca was not his sister at all. And uh, the, the King James says that uh, Abimelech looked out the window and towards the field, and there he saw uh, Isaac and Rebecca. And uh, the King James says that they were sporting. Well, they were doing that hus things that husband and wife doing, and that brother and sister don't do okay and uh, he huh that is not his sister and uh, I wonder if Isaac heard how that lie did not work out for Abraham did he think that maybe he could get away with it you know sometimes people think that well somebody did something and it didn't succeed but they didn't do it right I can get away with it. And he didn't get away with it. What Isaac thought was hidden was obvious to everybody else. So in question number four, Isaac is rebuked by the king. And this is in verses 9, 10, and 11. Uh, it says that he had been there for a long time. All right, they'd been there for a while. And he says, obviously, Rebecca is your wife. And, you know, he 
told him what he saw. Okay, she's not your sister. And he was, he was livid with Isaac. What have you done to us? You know, he says, what if, what if one of our people had taken Rebecca as a wife, uh, thinking she was your sister? What if someone, what if they had done something they ought not to have done? You would have brought guilt on us. And so, uh, you know, Isaac said, you know, I was afraid that you'd kill me for her. And so the king charged all the people. He who touches either Rebecca or Isaac, he that touches them will die. And so he, the king, he really put the fear of God on them. Now remember, we, we from the evidence before, we believe that uh, the king of Gur, the first Abimelech, that he was a God-fearing man. God appeared to him. And so there's nothing, there's nothing contrary to thinking that this man also believed in God and he was afraid for what would have happened that if he had violated this man's wife. Now in verses 12 to 14, remember we tell you that uh, time and again that between verses and sometimes in verses there's a long period of time. Now in verses 12 to 14 it tells us that Isaac became wealthy. Now what this means that remember when, when Abraham died he, he gave a considerable inheritance to Isaac. He'd already given stuff to uh, Keturah and her sons, and he blessed them and sent them away. Uh, and Isaac was already uh, a wealthy man, but it says here he became even more wealthy, meaning that the blessing of God, he wasn't just living on his father's laurels, but God was blessing him, and it was obvious to everyone around him that God was blessing him. And so during this famine, he dug wells in the land. And it says that he sowed seed in that land, and he reaped a hundredfold. Now, obviously, the soil was very good for growing. And by irrigating, he was able to to have great crops. And the Lord blessed him to the point where the Philistines envied him. Now, in this, we, we see when the enemy is at work, in their jealousy, they filled in the wells. Now, think about that for a few moments. They could dig wells also, but what did they do? Nope. They envied what Isaac and his men were doing. And on top of that, they filled in the wells. The thought never even, uh, the thought never even entered into their mind to ask if they could share the well. Can we share the water? So the solution was the king advised Isaac to move away. And he did. He and his uh, entourage, they left. Now, they didn't go far, far away. But he returned to the wells of Abraham. That when he was a young man, his Abraham had dug wells in the land of Gerar. And now, when Abraham had moved away, moved back to Hebron, we, we don't know what happened to the wells, but somehow they were filled in. Uh, now, we don't know if the enemy, if the Philistines did it, if someone else did it, or, you know, there was probably decades from the time of Abraham being there until Isaac returns. And we don't know if they just fell in disrepair and caved in. We don't know. But anyway, Isaac came to those places and he dug them out. Uh, and then the Philistines had filled them in. Remember, they, out of jealousy, they filled him in. And so he dug out the wells and he called them by the names that Abraham had given those wells. This was in honor to his father. Now, this speaks well of the relationship between Isaac and his father. You know, sometimes when a person is trying to step out of the shadow of 
uh, a parent or a grandfather, they sometimes, you know, they'll destroy their own heritage. You know, they won't call themselves by their name or they won't do this. They want to totally uh, cut themselves off from their family. But not Isaac. He was proud of his father. And uh, he even found a new water source, and it's called a well of running water. It was just bobbling, and uh, that was great. Now, question number seven. The herdsmen of Gur quarreled with Isaac's herdsmen. And so they said, this water is ours. And they, that and it was called Isaac, which means it's ours. And so Isaac's men, they moved on a little bit and they dug another well. And it's called Sitna. And the men, uh, the herdsmen of Gera, they quarreled with Isaac's herdsmen again over that one too. That's ours. He moved on. He dug a third well. And he got far enough away from them, they didn't quarrel over that one. And he called it Rehoboth. Now, eventually, Isaac, remember with sheep, you have to have constant pasture. And with uh, the famine, he keeps moving around, and here he comes back to Beersheba, where Abraham had dwelt for a while, and in the night, the Lord appeared to Isaac, and it showed, talked to him, and again, he gives him the same promise of blessing that he had extended toward Abraham, and at that point, we read that Isaac built an altar to the Lord there. Uh, now, the building of an altar uh, is a uh, indication of his sincerity of worshiping the Lord. And at the same time, they also dug another well. And they're looking for more water. Now, one day after this, the king of Gerar paid Isaac a visit. He came with the uh, general of the army. He came with the head of his court, uh, and they marched in to pay Isaac a visit. And Isaac questioned, what are you guys doing here? What's, it, what's your motive? Uh, you hate me. And you sent me away. You made me move away. What's, what's up? Why are you here? And I want you to see this. These men, these heads of state, they said to Isaac, we have seen the Lord's hand of blessing on you. And so this makes me think that as each one of those periods of time that Isaac was, he moved a little ways away and he dug a well and they were there for a while, and they were there for, it must have been at least one harvest, because it says the, they, they enjoyed a, a blessing of a hundredfold, and then eventually, so we'll say after several years, they filled in that well, and he moved on to another, remember, second and third place, and he kept digging wells, and every place that he went, his crops increased, his herds increased, the, the, their women and children just multiplied, and they saw the blessing of the Lord on Isaac, and they recognized that. And so he says to Isaac, he said, let's make a covenant between us, between your people and our people, between your descendants and my descendants, that there won't be war between us. And let's make it let's make this treaty between us. And the scripture says that they departed in peace. And in this we see the hand of the Lord blessing Isaac. The the king bore no hard feelings from Isaac's little uh, escapade or deception. He you know everything's all fine now. That lets us know that, you know, we can mess up and be restored. 
we can have a falling out with somebody and we can uh, remember when you were kids and you had a uh, maybe you had a, a, a an argument or a fight with your brother or sister and you know your parents told you okay now kiss and make up all right and uh, so they departed in peace they they signed this covenant that uh, there would not be animosity uh, anymore between the people of Gerar and the people of Isaac. Now, we see in verses 32 and 33 that wells become a form of blessing in the first place that where they have been digging, they always found a well. They always found water. And that very day that they signed this covenant of peace between their peoples, that very day, the servants reported striking water. And so they called this water Sheba, which means the seventh well. And so we see something in the life of Abraham. Abraham was a man of altars. We see him time and again. Something's going on and he builds an altar and he moves from place to place and he builds an altar. Jacob would be a man of tents. We are always reading of Jacob being of the tents and we always see him living in a tent someplace. Isaac is that man, a man of wells. He kept digging and even when they filled the well in, he dug it back out again. You know, that digging out of the well again and again when the enemy fills it up, you know, in a way, that's sort of like our lives, isn't it? We live our lives and we, we have the presence of the Lord. We have the hand of the Lord on us. We live in our life. And, you know, there are some times that people will dump on us. Sometimes people will make fun of us. Sometimes people will hurt us, wound us. Sometimes people will take advantage of us. And that's like having your well filled in. But we don't give up. We try, try again. We keep plugging along. You know, the things that people want to dump on us, we get rid of them. We take it to the Lord and leave it there in prayer. And the Lord is faithful to help us and to watch over us. Now, our last question uh, this morning, we're looking at Esau. And in verses 34 and 35, we see that Esau gets married. Now, Esau went against Abraham's pattern of not marrying the Canaanites. You'll remember in the previous lesson how Abraham had sent to uh, Ur and he had sent Eliezer back to get a bride for Isaac and he did the Lord led him right to Rebecca and the scripture says that she was very 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 beautiful okay and we see that Abraham had said to Eliezer don't you dare let my son marry one of these Canaanite women and what did Esau do? He married Canaanite women. Both of his wives were of the Hittites people. Those were Canaanites. And now we could probably see how that happened. Remember that Jacob was one that stayed near the flocks. He was near the tents. He was a husbandman over the the sheep and knew all about that stuff and loved doing that. But Esau, he loved to hunt. And so he was constantly on the move. And he probably, he frequently probably came through the villages and the, the farms and the other Canaanite people and probably spent weeks out hunting and coming back with game uh, and he, he just was not concerned about following after what Abraham had set as a precedent. Now, 
these verses, verses 34 and 35, they sum up Esau's uh, life up to this point. It says that his wives, both of them, now we probably can, are, are, you're probably ahead of me on this, uh, it, trying to be a husband to two women, that's asking for a lot of trouble. And here it says they were a grief to Isaac and Rebekah. So right from the get up, right from morning to night, they were raised with false idols. They were raised with Canaanite ways, would be contrary to uh, the ways of God. And it was just, uh, you know, a thorn in their flesh. They were a grief to Isaac and Rebekah. Um, you know, we as, when we, guys, when we get married, our wives ought to be a blessing to our parents. And here, this was not the case. It, they were a grief. And no, that must have, that must have made Isaac and Rebecca's hearts just ache. It's a sad epitaph over the life of Esau. We need to follow after the Lord. Oh. Thank you for being with us this morning. We trust that you have enjoyed this lesson. Let's close in prayer. Precious Lord, we thank you for your goodness today in watching over us. We thank you, Lord, that when we follow you, good things will happen to us, just as when Isaac, he found wells, and eventually there was peace between his people and the people of Gerar. And we see the hand of the Lord blessing Isaac, help us to walk with you. And if we walk with you, Lord, the blessing of the Lord will follow us. I pray your peace and your strength and your, your blessing upon people today. We ask in Jesus' name. Amen. God bless you. We are so glad that you are with us. And we hope to see you in the house of the Lord tomorrow. God bless you.